Welcome to another Anatomy and Physiology Smart Art video, where we guide you through an important piece of art. After watching this video, you should be able to identify the hormones, organs, and homeostatic mechanisms that maintain healthy levels of calcium ions in blood. This image illustrates the organs involved in calcium ion homeostasis in blood, the intestines, kidneys, and bones. The intestines serve as the site for calcium absorption from diet into the blood. The kidneys excrete calcium from blood via urine, and bone serves as a reservoir for storing calcium. This negative feedback process can be described using these two flowcharts. The flowchart on the left shows the factors that raise blood calcium levels, and the one on the right shows the factors that lower blood calcium levels. Let's start on the left to see what happens when calcium levels are too low. When calcium ion levels fall below 8.5 milligrams per deciliter of blood, the parathyroid glands secrete parathyroid hormone, or PTH. PTH acts on three organs, bones, intestines, and kidneys. First, let's look at the effect of PTH on bone. PTH stimulates the maturation of osteoclasts. Increased osteoclastic activity accelerates erosion of the bone matrix, which releases stored calcium ions into blood. In the intestines, PTH enhances the calcium absorbing effects of the hormone calcitriol. As a result, your intestines absorb more calcium ion from what you eat and drink. In the kidneys, PTH increases renal production of calcitriol, which not only works at the intestines as was just mentioned, but also stimulates calcium reabsorption in the kidneys. The result is less calcium lost in urine, which keeps more calcium ions in blood. Notice that these three mechanisms work together to raise calcium levels in blood back to normal levels. What happens if blood calcium levels rise above normal? Let's turn to the second flowchart to see. When calcium ion concentration rises above 11 milligrams per deciliter of blood, the C cells of the thyroid gland respond by secreting another hormone, calcitonin. Like PTH, calcitonin acts on the bones, intestines, and kidneys. But unlike PTH, calcitonin lowers blood calcium levels. Again, let's start with the effects on bone. Calcitonin inhibits osteoclasts, but does not affect osteoblasts. The net result is that more calcium ions are deposited from blood into bone. In the intestines, calcitonin inhibits PTH. This lowers the rate of calcium absorption. In the kidneys, calcitonin reduces renal production of calcitriol. Calcium, therefore, is more likely to remain in the intestines and urine and be eliminated from the body. Subsequently, calcium ion levels in blood decrease. In summary, calcium ion homeostasis in blood is hormonally regulated by negative feedback and the organs involved are the bones, intestines, and kidneys. When calcium ion levels in blood fall below normal, the parathyroid glands secrete PTH, which brings calcium levels back up to normal. And when calcium ion levels rise above normal, the C cells of the thyroid gland secrete calcitonin to bring them back down. So what? Why is it important to understand the hormones and organs involved in calcium ion homeostasis of blood? Well, calcium is vital to numerous physiological processes, such as muscle contractions, nerve impulses, and blood clotting. Also, this knowledge has led to the development of pharmacological calcitonin, which is used as a treatment for osteoporosis in postmenopausal women because it inhibits osteoclastic activity.